Hello YouTube, this is the Killican, and I am here to spout out my opinion about the latest, most controversial of Battlefield V's war stories, The Last Tiger. Now, I've always been a huge fan of the Battlefield franchise, but Battlefield 1 single player was kinda not really what, what I thought was the best thing about it. Whatever the case may be, I know Battlefield is primarily multiplayer, and as much as I love that, I've always loved story-driven single-player campaign uh, games best. So, I'm going to go ahead and let you know what I think about this game, or at the very least, the controversial Last Tiger campaign. And I'm going to go ahead and say this, I think it's by far the strongest campaign, a uh, war story campaign, in the game. Now, <laughs> alright, I know it's controversial saying that, but it's my opinion. Now, first of all, uh, the way games have been going at, at this rate, I'm glad to see single player in it at all, but personally, I am very, very glad to see a, just a fresh perspective on World War II in a single player campaign in a first person shooter. Now, well, now, what I really like about Last Tiger is I love how the story follows a group of soldiers, a tank crew, unlike the other War Story campaigns that really only focus on one or two characters. Uh, the cutscenes and dialogue really hammer home the fact that it is a team effort in the tank. Uh, much like how in multiplayer, for example, it's a team effort with all the different classes. I also find that the characters are a lot more interesting. You know, there's there's Mueller, the battle-hardened commander, there's the seasoned but cynical driver, the shaken and traumatized uh, but loyal loader, and then there's the visibly younger and inexperienced rookie who clearly follows the party line a lot better if you see in the campaign. Now, I was a huge fan of the Battlefield Bad Company campaigns, uh, 1 and 2, and I'm kind of really glad to see that the campaign in Last Tiger kind of harkens back to the concept of, you know, following this one small team, albeit in a much more gritty and serious tone and setting than Battlefield Bad Company 1 and 2 were. I also like that it's from, you know, like I said, the perspective of a line unit at the front where the two war machines met, you know? Battling through smoking remains and rubble, uh, seeing the carnage and destruction brought down on a German town in the final days of the war, rather than being some clearly romanticized retelling of a commando raid uh, like like two of the other war stories in Battlefield V. And, and even the combat, it feels a lot more like a traditional first-person shooter single-player uh, single campaign, you know, unlike, like I mentioned earlier, Battlefield 1's War Stories, which, uh, with a few exceptions to it, basically just felt like you were wandering around big maps with the exact same ten soldiers, with the exact same weapons periodically respawning at random locations and just coming at you over and over and over again. You know, like the one in Austria, or the one in Gallipoli. Uh, anyway, uh, in this game, you feel, you really feel like a lone tank with a, a few scattered remnants of a once powerful army facing off against a much larger force, and it feels pretty darn epic, quite frankly. And speaking of epicness, it's freaking awesome to be in control of a tiger tank. You know, the majority of the time you're driving the tank, and it, um, <laughs> uh, occasionally you get out of the tank and do some fighting on the ground, but when you're in the tank, you know, it fe you feel like a legit badass, you know, yeah, you, you can just feel the destructive power, you know, of, the, of, of one of, if not the, deadliest tank in the history of warfare, you know, I mean, uh, uh, granted, you need to use your head and keep an eye out for enemy tanks and enemies with bazookas and, and your know, field guns. Uh, 
a lot of times when I did my play through the campaign, I I let the you know the power of the tank go to my head, and I would get cocky, and I wouldn't be cautious, and I'd end up getting blown up a lot and having to you know restart the checkpoint a lot. Uh, but if you know if you stay frosty and you play smart, you'll un you'll understand why in real life most tigers ran out of ammo before the Allied tank stopped coming. If I had to have a complaint about something with the game, it would have to be the fact that the campaign is just way too short. You know, it's really just showing uh, the final days of the war. And like I said, these characters are interesting enough that it really feels like maybe EA should have just had this be the main story campaign and just followed this one German tank crew's experience all through the war. You know, see how the loader Hartman got all shaky and dysfunctional and all the other aspects of the, the story and whatnot. In short, I say The Last Tiger is a step in the right direction for the franchise. It manages to capture the epic feel of World War II while showing it from a small team's point of view. Uh, it's intense, gritty, and ends on a bit of a low note without any real spoilers. But if you thought that this story was going to have a happy ending, you really don't know your history. Um... Basically, it's I kind of see this movie as basically a German version of the movie Fury, and I mean that in the best way, because I love that movie. Well, uh, thank you all very much for watching. Uh, feel free to post comments below, tell me how wrong I am, tell me how right I am, whichever you prefer. Other than that, uh, I know it's not in tune with the, with the video here, but uh, uh, Merry Christmas to all of you, uh, game on gamers, and have a good night.